grant us the ability to be able to articulate ourselves in ways, Almighty God, that will ensure that we deliver our request right and we speak right, we deliver this thing right in the name of Jesus. But I glorify yourself in the name of Jesus. I thank you for what you have done, what you are doing, and what you are still going to do. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for bringing us to the second day of January 2024. The year has already started. And Lord, we are so excited. We are so excited for the growth in this year. We are so excited for what you have planned for us in this year. We are so excited for the teaching in this year. We are so excited for the manifestation in this year. We are so excited all of for the work in this year. We are so excited for what you are going to do in this year. Thank you for bringing us back to yourself. Father, we give you praise. And Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. All right. Today is day one. We are going to be running through a five-day uh, prayers and fa prayer and fasting sessions. Um, so uh, trust that as God teaches us, as we go through this teaching, it's going to be uh, a life-changing experience for all of us in the name of Jesus. Now, please, if you remember, if you cannot fast, it's okay. Uh, if you can fast, fantastic. Uh, but the key thing is the state of our heart. So today, day one, so the way I'm going to run these sessions over the next five days is, uh, I think the last day we're going to have communion just so anybody can understand. Remember that, please, meet on, on Saturday, we're going to have communion session on Saturday. But to, for this um, day, the way it's going to run is, I will do a bit of teaching and then we'll start raising prayers uh, as the Lord lays in my heart. Okay, and but I've got some principles that I'm going to share as well that will, will be the focal point of the key prayers as we go from there. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Make sure I have the right thing open. So today, the 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 the, uh, the focus of the prayers and the teaching and the prayer is about the fact that God has given you the kingdom. So on the cross of the Sabbath, you spoke about the kingdom of God. The fact that in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, God said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He says, All of these things will be added to you. What are all of these things that will be added? There are things that people in the world run after. You know, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? With what are we going to be clothed? And God said, Your father knows already that you need these things so the basic needs of our lives are not meant to be things that we struggle with because god says i know you need these things anyway but he's saying in order for us to achieve significance god says put the kingdom first and it says seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness if you're here today you did you, you were not at the cross of the service you can go back i think we put a copy of it now on youtube you can go back and watch it but the key thing that I want to talk about today is that God in Christ, God has given us the kingdom. So we want to take a step back and understand when the Bible says experiencing the kingdom, what is it talking about? Experiencing the kingdom. Notice that in this phrase, experience the kingdom, uh, there are two key words. On the one hand is to experience. On the other hand is the kingdom. So, the kingdom therefore becomes the object, right? Or the focal point that we need to pay attention to. You have an experience of something that is a focal point, it's the kingdom. What is an experience? An experience is something, is something that is not told to you. An experience is something that you engage with. An experience is something that you can recount. So for example, if you have gone bungee jumping, uh, and somebody is watching the bungee jumping on YouTube how to do it. One person has watched it. The other person has experienced it. So the person who actually jumped off in from the ledge with a rope tied around his waist and felt the rush of adrenaline as the person, you know, 
dives into the into the into the ocean below as it were that person acts experience the the spot or yeah the spot or the game <laughs> the spot as it were buggy jumping but somebody who sits in his home and was watching watching this same experience on youtube cannot have experience as somebody who actually jump off the cliff to experience that so what god wants to do this year and i want to really paint that picture is for you to have an experience of the kingdom god does not want it to be told to you about how oh, this is how the kingdom works no god wants you to experience it and the question that i'm going to your mind is how do i experience the kingdom well i will say before we start talking about how to experience it's important to understand what the kingdom means the benefits of the kingdom what it means for your own personal life the word kingdom is a combination of two words king and dom and dom is a short form of dominion and it's a short form of the word that means domain so kingdom is the king's dominion or the king's domain is the territory under the rulership of the king now, the word dominion was used for the first time in the Bible in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Remember, I've talked about the law of first mention. The law of first mention suggests that when you see a word used for the first time in the Bible, you must find out the reason why it was used. Because the reason why it was used depicts to us the mindset of the person who was speaking the word. Anytime you see a word used for the first time in the Bible, it begins to convey to us the mind of God, the intent of God, the desire of God when the word was used. So the word dominion was used first in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. The Bible says that God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the head, over the cattle, and over all the earth over all the earth and over every creep that creeps upon the earth god says i want to make a species i want to make a human being i want to make a creature right just like myself this creature will have my spiritual image this scripture this creature will function just like myself the word likeness there is not talking about form it's talking about to function like while the word image is uh, a spiritual image to have the same spiritual DNA as God himself so God made us like himself we have the same spiritual DNA like God Almighty we are spirit being so when God made Adam and Eve in the beginning God made them like himself he made them a, spirit, uh, a spiritual being first it was in Genesis that God then created the body of Adam. So we have the image of God. We are all spirit beings. This is the reason why when you go into a house and something is happening in that house or somebody doesn't like you, you can pick it up then divide because the person doesn't have to speak anything because we are spiritual beings. There are, there are uh, I, want to, I don't want to call it electromagnetic, electromagnetic waves or something like that. There's, there's a vibe in the spirit that you can pick up that is not tangible, but you can just pick it up because we're spirit beings. So God made us like himself, like his, his spiritual image. But all, God also gave us what? The ability to function like himself. Now, how did God function? God functioned by speaking words. Because the Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, I'll go back in my notes here. Genesis chapter 1. I want you to see how God functions, right? God functions by faith. And the reason why I am laboring on this because when we start to pray, do not second guess yourself. Don't say, oh man, I don't have the power. I don't have the ability. No, you are made in the same image like God. And God wants to function in his likeness, like himself. How did God function? Genesis chapter 1. Verses 1 to 2. The Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. 
And God said, let there be light. God said, let there be light. And there was light. So we see God declared what he wanted. And what he wanted showed up. So when you want to function like God, you need to do what? Speak like God spoke in the beginning. And God said, the reason why I'm creating this creature, these creatures that are like myself, that are meant to function like myself, is for one reason and one reason alone. Let them have dominion. Let them have what? Dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over everything that creeps upon the earth. God says, I'm giving you dominion over birds, giving you dominion over animals, giving you dominion over everything that creeps. I'm giving you dominion over all the earth, which is plant life. Anything that is on this earth, God is giving you dominion on it. But notice here, God did not give you dominion over another human being. Human beings are not meant to be dominated. Human beings are not meant to be dominated. So if our prayer point is focusing on dominating another human being to make them to be subservient to you, it is going against the creed that God de de designed. That kind of prayer, God will not answer it. God wants you to dominate everything on the earth. Why is that? Because God, as the king of the universe, has designated the earth as a place where he wants to bring his rulership on own. That's what we're talking about, the kingdom of God. We're talking about the rulership of God upon the earth. So the word dominion here in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 is from the Hebrew word radar. And radar is a royal, is a royal word. Radar is a royal word. Radar means to rule or to dominate. So we see therefore, therefore that your, the main construct behind the mind of God when he created you, when you made you, was for you to live a life of royalty. Was for you to rule over situations in your life. If it is in your job, God wants you to rule. If it's in your family, God wants you to rule. If it's in your health, God wants you to rule. God wants you to rule everywhere that you go. God wants you to dominate everywhere you go. How do you dominate? You bring the realm of the king to your place. So you are made in the image and likeness of God to be able to achieve one primary objective to exercise dominion over the earth. So, even though God has said this is the year of experiencing the kingdom, you may you may rephrase this as this is the year to experience dominion. The year to experience dominion. Remember the example I gave earlier. Somebody watching YouTube or not to bungee jump. The other person actually bungee actually uh, performed the act of bungee jumping. One person experienced bungee jump. The other person is watching it on YouTube. They are not the same thing. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that this year in every area of your life that you are going to dominate, that when situation shows up in your life, that you will know what to say, that you function like God expects you to function in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, that you will know what to say, what to do and how to function, that you function like God functions in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you that the spirit that raised Christ from the dead will invade your heart in a mighty way, that this year you shall experience God like you've never experienced him before, that God will trust you with new assignment, God will trust you with new objective, that you will run the race set before you with focus in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you that the might of God, the power of God, the grace of God, the wonder of God will be made manifest in your life in preponderant measure. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you that in the arena where God has placed you, whether it's in the marketplace or it's in your office or it's your career, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. The Lord who has called you into this royal life will equip you this year so that you will know what to say and how to say it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yesterday, two days ago, when I was talking about the cross, like the cross of the service, I spoke about the father. If you have a king and the king does not know that he has the power, that king will be a useless king. That king will be a king that the citizen of his country will not be happy about. The king is a king. He was ordained a king, but he doesn't know he has the power. 
or you have a king that actually knows he has the power but the king refuses to act a king that knows he has power and refuses to act is no different from not having a king at all a king that is in power and who does not know he has power is not different from a servant so there are two scenarios that can make us not to function like God wants us to function. Number one, if we don't know that we are kings. Number two, if we do know we are kings, but we are not operating as kings. Over the next five days, as we begin to look through this and begin to make declaration, I want to show you by the power of the Holy Ghost that it is your responsibility to function like God functions in, in the beginning. The way God functioned in the beginning was God spoke what he wanted. God acted with unity. God had a desire of what he wanted. He went ahead to this, declare what he wanted. As he declared what he wanted, what he wanted came to pass. God acted out his intent based on what he wanted and he got result. Whatever goal you have written down this year, whatever idea that you want for this year i am asking you by the power of the holy ghost to be very clear about what you want to write it down to vocalize it to speak about it in the morning speak about it in the afternoon speak about it in the evenings or constantly talk about what god is going to bring forth in your life why because god said as you have spoken in my ears this day so will i do unto you the kingdom of god is the realm of the rule of the sovereign God over all creatures and things. It is in the realm where the will of God is executed. It is a jurisdiction where God, 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 God's agenda begins to play out. It is the place where you bring heaven's influence over situation. It is the place where the administration of God happens. It is the place where the impact and the influence of the king can be made manifest. Psalm 103 verse 19, the Bible says, The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Daniel chapter 4 verse 3 says, How great are his signs, how mighty his wonders, how his kingdom is an eternal kingdom, his dominion endures from generation to generation. So we see that the rulership of God pervades and permeates all things. But that kingdom, that kingdom of God, he has given to everyone who has given their lives to Jesus. When Nicodemus came to Jesus Christ in John chapter 3, he said, Master, what must I do to be born again? And to, 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 uh, to what, must, what, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Let me actually read it. And Jesus Christ said to me, that you must be born again. And the guy said, should I go back into my mother's womb and then become born again? Jesus Christ says to me, verily, verily, I say unto you, verse 3, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, right? And then the Christian was be, be worried. What do you mean born again? I have to go back to my mother's womb to get born again? Just guy said, no. Very, very, I said to you, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So if you are born again and you are on the call, there are two things I want you to notice. Except a man be born again, he cannot see. There is a difference between seeing the kingdom and entering the kingdom. Seeing the kingdom is that which gives you perception. You begin to perceive how the kingdom functions. That is seeing the kingdom. To enter the kingdom is to take possession of what the kingdom of God uh, uh, presents. So, I believe everyone who is born again in the world has a revelation, a perception about what the kingdom of God means. But it's not everybody that has entered it. When I say to enter, I'm not talking about going to heaven here. I'm not talking about whether you begin to question whether am I born again, am I not born again. I'm talking about an experience of the kingdom. So John chapter 3 verse 5, Jesus Christ says, you must what? Be born of water and of spirit. To be born of water is to be led by the word. Is to be fed by the word. Is to allow, allow your life to be dictated by the word of God. To be, to be born of the spirit is to allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. So now we have the word. And we have the spirit ready to help us. God essentially says, if you embrace my word and you allow the spirit of God to lead you, you are going to enter into the kingdom of God. You're going to begin to experience the kingdom. So the kingdom of God is a sphere of salvation that you enter in at the new birth. You enter into it at the new birth. You perceive it when you became born again, but to begin to experience it, you must embrace the function of the ministry of the and the ministry of the holy spirit praise god so now in luke chapter 12 verse 31 to 32 the bible says seek the kingdom of god and all of this thing will be given to you as well 
He now said, do not be afraid. God wants you to seek this kingdom, to enjoy the kingdom. God wants you to seek it. Strive after it. Make it your number one goal. And let's say all of the things that people in the world run after will be added. There will be bonuses that you are going to get. He now says something, verse 32, which I'm going to focus on and I'm going to begin to pray. He said, do not be afraid. Why? Do not be anxious. Why? Because there might be situations that you are going through right now that is that are causing you to be afraid. You might be going through a divorce. You might be going through a, a challenge with your business. You might be going through academic challenges. You might be going through your health. And, and these things speak to you that bring fear into your heart. Just do not be afraid of anxious. Why? Why is he saying that? He said, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. What kingdom is he talking about? The kingdom of God. What is this kingdom? The place where dominion rules. Remember, the first word we hear in dominion is Genesis 1 verse 26 talking about the dominion that we have. So, the rulership of God, the realm in which you enter into, the realm of limitless possibilities, God says it is the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Don't be afraid. What Whatever you are going through right now, don't be afraid. For it is the Father's good pleasure to do what? To give you the kingdom. The Father desires to give you the kingdom. And when you became born again, you have the kingdom. What we want to be unpacking and be teaching and be talking about, and the prayers we're going to be saying is for you to what? To begin to experience that kingdom. So the first thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about three things. Prayer about three things that that are things that can usually affect us that may uh, uh, ensure that we're not taking advantage of the kingdom in which we are the first one is what we see the second one is what we say the third one is what we think what we see what we say and what we think now there's a life principle that goes this way you become who or what you behold you become who or what you behold. So, essentially saying, who you spend time with or what you spend time with will influence your life. So, this is how we can unconsciously pick up mannerisms of people closest to us. In 2020, to experience the kingdom, God wants you to be careful who you hang out with, who you spend time what you put at the very very of your attention. So the first prayer I want us to pray is, is this. Is a Father, surround me this year with those who will challenge me. Surround me with people <laughs> this year that will surround me, that, that will challenge me. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray. Open your mouth and pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, surround me with people that will challenge me to be better. Lord, I pray, oh Lord, that you change my circle. And on Sunday, I preach about the Father. If your circle, the people that surround you in your circle are not influencing you positively, that you don't have a circle, you have a cage. You can go back and watch that sermon on, on Sunday. That if, you, if your circle is not influencing you, they are not challenging you to do better, to become better, then you don't have a circle, you have a cage. That circle has become a prison house and you need to get out of it. So I want you to Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray in 2024 that you surround me with the, the right kind of circle, the right kind of influence, the right kind of friends, the right kind of association, all my God that will challenge me to be better, that will challenge me to be better. People that are kingdom-minded, people that are kingdom-minded, people that want to see the advancement of your kingdom on the face of the earth. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that my eyes will behold, oh God, the Almighty God, your goodness, that my eyes will see only that which you are doing, Almighty God. My eyes will not be besotted by the things happening in the world. Lord, I pray 
pray in the name of Jesus Christ for your help, oh God. Surround me this year, oh Lord, with destiny helpers. People almighty God who are hungry for the world. People who are hungry for the advancement of the kingdom of God on the face of the earth. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that my association, almighty God, with people, Lord, who are challenging me, challenging me to be better, that I will move from one level to another in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, you have heard the saying, birds of the same feather flock together. Birds of the same feather flock together. But have you ever wondered why they said birds of the same feather uh, uh, flock together? It is because as humans, we are comfortable with associating with people that are like us. I want to say that again. Human beings are comfortable to associate with people that are like them. I remember many years ago, I used to sell insurance. I used to sell life insurance and critical illness and all that. And when we go into people's homes to go okay. We look for uh, for pictures and uh, wall ornaments and things that we can use as conversation brokers. And uh, so we might see a picture of a wonderful child, of a family picture. Because oh, wow, a wonderful family you have. We try to use that to bridge converse to bridge conversation, so that we can begin to find commonality between us. And when somebody finds that you are like them, you know, there's some there's a level of um, um, it's a level of uh, um was that i would commonality between you they begin to give you audience they they feel like they feel at home with you they feel at home with you so we 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 relate more to people all right that are like us so a person who understands it a salesperson who understands it can leverage that by building rapport you build rapport with people they feel like oh man i already know these people that's why the power of language is important when you speak a certain language it breaks barriers so the reason why we like to we 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 the, the same best of the same federal flock together is because we like to associate we are comfortable with people that are like us. So that prayer, I want us to pray again as a father this year. Help me to stretch. Help me to stretch as I, as I change my circle. Help me to stretch. What am I saying that you might have to leave some people behind that are not kingdom minded. You might have to go to seminars that some of your friends don't want to go. You might have to, you know, pick up new skills that some of your friends are not interested in. But it's okay. It's okay. And as you pick up that, it will stretch you. You might feel like, oh, why am I even doing this? I want you to pray that prayer and say, Father, Lord, help me to stretch in 2024 as I change my circle. Lord, help me, Almighty God with what it takes, what is needed to be able to stretch in the name of Jesus Christ. Help me, Almighty God, to be able to stretch so that I surround myself with people, oh Lord, that are better than me. People that are doing better than me. People that are challenging me to be better, to do more, to, to have more. In Jesus' name, surround yourself with people, you know, that study the word of God more. Surround yourself with people that want to help you to grow. Surround yourself with people that are moving higher. Now, the reason why that is better because you cannot help people that are coming behind if you yourself need help. So begin to say, Father, I thank you, Lord, that in 2024, you are going to stretch me and you are going to help me. You are going to uphold me and strengthen me. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I receive help from the Holy Ghost that I will stretch, oh Lord. I will enter new territory that your help is available to me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Bible said by you, oh God, and I can run two troops, but my God, I can scale fences. Lord, I thank you for supernatural help. I thank you for new dimensions. I thank you for new dimensions and new territory. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord, thank you, Almighty God, because you said in your word this today that we should fear not that it is your good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Lord, I receive new territory, oh God, new understanding, new level. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, there's an action that I would like you to take if you're writing this down. I want you to review those who and what speak over your life. Review who and what speak over your life. If what or who you have exposed your life to is not aligned to the future that you see, I want you to make a decision today to dissociate yourself from such group. Why? You cannot grow above your association. You cannot grow above your association. 
Remember, it is the Father's good will, good will or good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God has given you the kingdom in Christ. In Christ, you already have entered into the kingdom of God. You have entered. You have, but to experience that kingdom, to experience that kingdom is a different thing. You need to be, you need to cooperate with what God has done. So that's principle number one. You become what you behold. You become who you associate yourself. So make an action to, to get rid or dissociate from people that are not going in the same direction. So, so what I was covering was, we, so we spoke about, I want to talk about words, words, um, sorry, what you become, you become what you behold, principle one, principle two, what's a creative agent, principle three, thoughts precede actions. All right. So I've covered, did, did I completely cover, did you, did you get the, the prayers around having the right people, destiny help us and all that. Did you get that prayer? Oh, 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 can you, you, have I lost you again? No, we no, no, we didn't get the destiny helpers. We just got the part where you said people that don't, um, don't contribute to us going higher. We should disassociate okay. ourselves. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, but I think it was a prayer I prayed in that. Okay, let's just. I'm just gonna do it again. Let's do it yes. again. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, <clears throat> I said, as I'm talking about, if you can just be on beat, so that because I'm only I'm using my phone now to do it. So, I said you've had a saying, birds of the same feather flock together. And I said, have you wondered why? It is because as humans we are comfortable with assuming with people that are like us. And I said that this year we should pray prayer that the Lord will send us. Destiny help us, people that are going to challenge us to be better. You know, the reason why I'm saying that is because, see, if you are comfortable, you are you're hanging out with people that are that are not helping you to become better. You are going to become complacent. You're going to become complacent. So I want to just say, Father, in 2024, bring people, mentors, and coaches into my life that will challenge my thinking that will help me to grow better that will help me to become better in the mighty name of jesus christ in 2024 lord i pray my father and my god from far and near bring men and women boys and girls they might be older than me they might be younger to me it doesn't matter that will challenge my thinking that will help me to know that i can become better because your word makes me understand in order for me to be a kingdom citizen that will demonstrate and express the kingdom i have to keep thinking right lord therefore oh lord i thank you now that you are bringing men and women oh lord into my life oh god that will challenge my thinking that will help me oh god to become better to do better to think better to act better in the name of just christ thank you heavenly father lord we give you praise blessed be your name father lord i thank you lord i bless you lord i give you praise blessed be your name father in the name of jesus thank you heavenly father in jesus name we pray i said here review who or what speak over your life if who or what you have exposed your life to is not aligned to the future that you seek you must call them off you cannot grow above your association. You cannot grow above your association. So I want us to take that prayer again to say, Lord, I attract the right relationship into my life in the name of Jesus. By the help of the Holy Ghost, I attract the right relationship into my life in the name of Jesus. By the help of the Holy Ghost, I attract the right relationship into my life in the name of jesus christ thank you almighty god thank you for the work you are doing thank you for the work you have done blessed be your name almighty god in the name of jesus thank you heavenly father in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray amen amen the second principle is words words are creative agents now here is the saying all things whether it's your home your computer your car your body, your born again life, <laughs> to that, your born again life and the world are framed out of words, are framed out of God's words. So now when you take the word of God and you speak them out of your mouth, it is like God himself is speaking. Can you see, hear me, people of God? 
Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. I think somebody was sending a chat. It is like God Himself is speaking. It is like God Himself is speaking. And I want to really ponder on that. So let's say, for example, there's something you believe God for. It might be a job, it might be a promotion, it might be healing, it might be advancement in your career, whatever it is. Find the word of God for it and begin to vocalize that out of your mouth. Because when the word of God leaves your mouth, and as you are making that decree and that declaration, it is as if God himself was, is the one speaking over that situation. Because you are created in the image and likeness of God. Your words can create your world. Your words can create your world. Your words create your world. And you might want to write that down. Your words create your world. As a matter of fact, you cannot rise above your confession. This is the reason why it's absolutely important to guard your mouth, what you're going to say this year. As a, as a king's child, remember, kings rule by decrees. On, 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 um, on the, at the watch time service, I said, in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4, the Bible says, where the word of the king is his power. And who may say to him, what are you saying? Who can say to the king? What are you talking about there? And I also shared in the book of Psalm 109 that the Bible says the angels of God hearken to the word of God. So when the angel of God hear you speak the word of God, they hear it, they listen to it, they hearken to implement it. Their work is their implementers, but they implement based on what you say. So the prayer here is this. Lord, help me to keep God over my mouth. Help me to keep God over my mouth. If there are words that I will say that will put me in trouble, help me to shut up. Help me to keep quiet. Lord Almighty, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ in 2024, Lord, I refuse to speak words of defeat, words of sickness, words of calamity. I choose my words carefully. I choose my words to build up and not to pull down. I choose my words to build up and not to pull down. Lord, in any way, when I begin to speak words that will put me in trouble, Lord, help me to shut up. Remind me to keep quiet. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I thank you, Almighty God, because you have told me today that as a king's child, my words creates my world because you spoke the word you spoke the entire universe into into being by the spoken word lord therefore my because your the word you spoke created the known world lord i speak life into my world i speak life into my world i speak advancement into my world please begin to prophesy over your life speak over yourself and say i'm achieving advancement i am moving forward powerfully I only know of the upward and the forward life. Say with me, I only know of the upward and the forward life. I only know of the upward and forward life in the name of Jesus Christ. My life is not limited by economic conditions. My life is not limited by economic conditions. I'm a child of God. Things are working for me. Things always work for me in the name of Jesus Christ. I only know of the upward and the forward life. In the name of Jesus Christ, praise God forevermore. I have a note here said, how come God did not create the world by grunting? <clears throat> God did not do that. Why? Why did he have to speak to create the universe? You need to ponder on that. We must take a cue from the creator and know that words are not just words. Words create and words can destroy. You need to make a choice. Praise God forevermore. And I, so I have an action here said, get a wristband, wear it on your wrist. Next time you find yourself speaking negative words, pull the wristband like this to jolt you back to God's reality. The other day I was sharing something in the, in the church and I said, when negative thoughts are going through your mind, you can just simply say, cancel, 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 which we're going to cover in the next uh, in the next. Um, that's what I'm going to cover now. So the words of your mouth create life. You can put a, a, your hand upon your mouth and say, Lord, this mouth will speak life. In 2024, this mouth will speak life. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I make a decree by the power of the Holy Ghost that in 2024, this mouth of mine will speak life. We speak life. We speak healing. We speak divine health. We speak advancement. We speak provision. We speak protection. We speak preservation. In the name of Jesus Christ. This mouth, we speak life. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
the Bible say is life and death are in the power of the tongue. Notice the Bible does not say it's in the power of God. It says life and death are in the power of the tongue. Those that love it, we eat the fruit of it, whether for life or for death, which means we get to choose the life we experience by the words we speak. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Last part here is thoughts. Thoughts precede actions. Thoughts precede actions. No action is ever taken without thoughts. Thoughts are actually what you say within yourself, but those words have the power to empower you or disempower you. There's a message on YouTube that we preached last Wednesday that talks about the power of your internal dialogue. You can go back and check it out. And I spoke about, about how if you have a goal, your thoughts can create emotion, emotion can create action, action can create a result. But the important thing is that this thought itself also, you know, has to go to the bridge of communication. What you are saying within yourself we either empower you or disempower you. So, have you ever wondered how your thoughts are shaping your reality? How may external factors, if unchecked, control the results you get in life? Your mind is the battlefield. That is where, where, why you have all, all sort of weird stuff going on social media, attacking your mind. So much distraction going on in this world. People cannot pay attention. So your mind is a battlefield. You know, I, I, I saw a post from uh, one of my mentors the other day. He said, the new currency, the new currency in the world today is our attention. The new currency is our attention. He said, before you say, oh, I have an IP. I've created this product. Say, the thing that everybody's trying to grab now is our attention. So today, there are so many things that try to distract us. You know, but you need to make a decision that in 2024, you will make God number one. Your thoughts will be the thought of God. Your thoughts will be the thought of God. Why? Because thoughts can produce results. You need to capture your thoughts with practice to get a different result. We need to learn to think differently. So I want you to pray. Say, Father, help me to think your thoughts after you. Help me to think like you would think in 2024. Help me to think the gospel. Help me to think the word. My philosophy to life will not be the philosophy of men, but be the philosophy of what the word of God says in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, help me to think right. Help me to think right in 2024. Help me to think right because the thinking place is the incubator of ideas. Lord, therefore, help me to think right in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for your help and I give you praise. Blessed be your name, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. In that prayer, I want to praise. Lord, help me to catch rogue thoughts. Help me to catch rogue thoughts and bring them to the obedience of Christ. Help me to catch rogue thoughts and bring them to the obedience of Christ. Lord, this day, oh Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that your help is already available for me. Help me in 2024 to capture rogue thoughts, any thought that will put me down, any thought that will build negativity in me. Help me to capture those rogue thoughts and bring such thoughts, Lord, to the obedience of Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' name, we pray. So here's an action that I want you to take, even for this one. Uh, how do you catch your own thoughts? Practice being quiet before God and start being grateful for your life. Then be conscious of what you are thinking about. Be conscious of what you are thinking about. So when you are quiet and you are grateful and you pay attention to what you are thinking about, you become aware of what will happen here. You are able to then bring those thoughts and say, oh, this thought is not correct. Then you replace that thought with the word of God. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. So I know my time is up. Again, thank you for being part of this message today. I will send you this um, great principle that I shared today uh, on, on the WhatsApp group. You can, again, there, it has on other scriptures in there. I want you to study those scriptures and pray for yourself. So remember today, the focus is that the, the, it is the, the God has given you the kingdom. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That's what day one is talking about. But I then share three principles that will help us. I spoke about principle about you become who you behold, change your association in this new year. Number two, the words you speak. Let it be words of life, words that build up, not words that tear somebody down. And number three, the thoughts you think. All right. So over the next uh, uh, four days that we have left, I will go through other principles 
uh, that we we can build upon and i will share things about the kingdom all right but this year i'm going to be teaching a lot in on sunday in sunday service about the kingdom take advantage of it god wants you to experience the kingdom all right so as you leave here please remember you are blessed and highly favored is there any question any comment before we go please remember that um on saturday there will be communion as we round up the prayer and fasting there will be communion if you cannot fast like i said it's okay uh but please try and join us every day uh, as we go through this uh we'll study year you know with the right kind of mindset mm. any question just a question about saturday is it are we having a morning and evening prayer on saturday <laughs> yes 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 okay. just wanted to know uh, the morning one is just standard stuff yeah this one is oh, just this yeah. will be for the seven o'clock okay yeah. yes yeah. all right so it's six six to seven yeah all right apologies i'm so sorry that the thing the, i was i was i've just was praying a lot i didn't know you were not hearing it but i think when the recording is done maybe it will be recorded uh you can we can go back and check uh, cloudy will look into that for us right so father in the name of jesus i just want to thank you for your children i thank you almighty god that this year we shall experience the kingdom in its full manifestation lord thank you almighty god that you help us in the words we speak in the thoughts we think in the associations we take that this year lord our focal point will be to work with people that are kingdom minded to speak words that are kingdom minded to think thoughts that are kingdom minded lord to act like you will act in every situation lord we thank you that it is not by power it's not by might it's not by even all the efforts that anybody is able to put in it is by your spirit lord therefore we receive help from you now we thank you for helping us lord you are the one who carries Thank you for carrying us. Thank you for carrying us. Thank you for bearing us upon eagle's wing. We are so excited, Lord, for what this year holds. Lord, I thank you, Almighty God, that every one of us shall experience the kingdom of God. We shall experience the realm of the kingdom on this earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, that in every field where we find ourselves, whether it is a medical field or in legal or in entrepreneurship or in academics, in every area we find ourselves, Lord, we shall be a de- we shall be demonstrators. Of the kingdom life we thank you almighty god help us to live here all over the consciousness that we are royal we are we are of royalty that we are royal priests for to unto god that you have brought us into the kingdom almighty god we are not servants we are not paupers we are children of the most high god with rights and privileges of the king of kings we thank you for it i'll give you praise in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. all right the our lord jesus christ love of God and the sweet fellowship of the world. Abide with us. Jolly. Jolly. All the days of our lives, we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. See you tomorrow.